Hi, my name is Lyle Cullen. I live here with my wife Marion. We've been here since 1993 in, uh, here in Totra Valley, just up behind Pleasant Point in South Canterbury. On this farm we carry about 800 deer, about 500 sheep, 100 beef cattle and more recently I've taken on 200 dairy grazers. I also have about 30 hectares in forestry. Um, I've done a lot of uh, fencing off of creeks, um, nutrient planning and the like of which we're going to see today. We've been water monitoring here for a few years. By water monitoring I mean I started off with what's called a smack kit. So I tested the creeks that the main creeks that ran through the farm, tested them for pH, temperature, water discoloration, but more recently I've started testing for uh, pH and nitrogen deposits. I did that to be get a more accurate assessment of what the water's like when it comes on my farm and what it's like when it goes off the farm. And that's going to feed into things we're required to do for the OPE water plan and the nutrient budget that we're required to have on our farms by 2016. So after 2016 if the farm leaches more than 20 kilograms per hectare per year and the, far and the farm is larger than 50 hectares or the nitrogen leaching from the property increases above the baseline then you need to get a resource consent. Yeah. Another reason I started testing the water for phosphate and nitrogen is there was a self-feed silage pit uh, about 200 metres above the creek, a bit further up in some forestry, and the hinds grazed in the silage and went down into the forestry for shelter over the winter. And I wanted to see if that was having any effect from uh, leaching from the silage and the, and the hinds being in a concentrated area. So I tested in two places right down below the silage pit and then again where the water, where the creek went off the farm. And fortunately, the, there was uh, very little difference. Uh, and in fact, the one below the silage pit, the nitrogen and phosphate counts were slightly higher than where they went off the farm. So this, the net result of that was that the silage pit had no effect at all on the creek. You've also got to be very careful of where you do your soil testing because obviously the contours of the farm in one particular paddock, you might have a knob. Um, a flat down the bottom and, a, um, you know, and anything in between. So you've really got to, um, I think we use GPS now to um, where, where we take the soil tests so that the next time we come back we do it in the same place because obviously there's a huge fertility transfer because obviously sheep especially and cattle sit on top of a hill. And so consequently now we have places marked off that when we fertilise that paddock we don't do the knobs. Behind the poplars is some Douglas firs, which I've planted for one of the plantations, and that was in the area where there was a few slips from uh, from high rainfall and slumping, so I decided to plant that face out. This stream behind me is called Sterndale Stream. I fenced this stream off uh, in about 2007, um, principally because it's obvious that that was the major stream on the farm and it was the first one that needed to be fenced. Some good things of fencing off a stream is obviously you have big buffers and it, it slows up the nitrogen and phosphate going into your creek. The bad thing about having big buffers is that when you shut something up weeds come away and down below me here we have some willows in there and there's willows upstream and they just drop their seeds or get swept down the stream and a couple of times a year I have to go in there and cut them out. But more recently I could see that this creek, even though it doesn't as carry as much water as Sterndale stream, it was that drains this whole valley and even though there's nothing in it at the moment, uh, when we get a big rain here it can be where it can be as high as my knees, it, where a lot of water goes down this valley. So I've planted the whole the rest of it off right up to uh, right up to where it comes in from the other valleys. Over here is this pad whole paddock is sort of a run, an alleyway down towards the yards. So deer are coming through here, sheep and cattle are going through there to the rest of the farm 
uh, and this is a wet wee area in here so deer were bogging it up pretty regularly so even though it's right in the middle uh, it's not up against the fence so I just decided to, to completely circle this um, this lower area here and plant it in trees so I've got a big wide buffer zone about six meters most of the way and it just goes right around the wet area um, a lot of corners in it and then it just comes into this culvert and into the main creek there. Uh, important thing when you're planting trees is not only the preparation which I did a, a pre-plant spray but also you follow up once the trees in. What happens is during the spring we have sprayed off all the grass the competition's basically gone so it comes away in a mass of Californian thistles which spend your life stamping down and then as you can see over the summer it wasn't too bad but now with this rain young grass has come away so really it's going to need another uh, another spray before the next growth of next spring. So someone suggested putting a, a square of carpet around uh, the plant to keep the grass and the weeds down which would be good if there's not very many but for a couple of thousand or so it gets a bit impractical. So when I started fencing off creeks I read you should start where the water leaves your property and work backwards, so that's what I've done here. In front of me here it's a bit impractical because there's a lot of stock walk through here and it's not always has water in it. You can see some deer over behind me there, uh, that's a mob of hinds which I just put in there this morning. Uh, next door are the stags that aren't getting used for mating, so uh, that's created a bit of mayhem and they're all pacing the fence and um, roaring away at the top of their life and fighting and things like that so that's uh, it's just an occupational hazard of this time of year I guess with deer. Deer walk the fences especially at this time of year which is a uh, which is an environmental thing on the side of a hill that just you end up with great tracks where the water runs down and, and uh, so you've got to try and limit that or stop it any way you can. Other farmers in the area are also taking a pretty responsible attitude. Uh, the dairy farm across the road here has fenced off this creek after it leaves my place and goes into his place uh, and it's fenced off all the way down and all the way down his farm and that goes into the beef stud across the road and they've had a pretty responsible uh, attitude for years and uh, all the creek when it goes through their place is fenced, permanently fenced off uh, so there's a lot of farmers working together to uh, try and look after the well-being of the stream.